Hey YouTubers, how you guys doing? It's been a long time. Um, I know I've recorded a video in a couple months, well, from last year. I talked about, I think the last video I uploaded was about the 3900X build, which I did build. I just didn't do a review on it or nothing. Um, so it's just laziness on my part. Um, but to be honest, guys, I'm not, I'm not like a YouTube kind of guy. Like I only do videos to share, you know, um, things that I'm interested in. And so if you, you know, if you guys can bear that, you know, again, occasionally here and there I upload. Um, but I might be uploading a little bit more because I find myself in a new hobby I really, really love. Um, doesn't mean that I'm, I'm gonna uh, not do any PC videos. I will do PC videos still, but I got into a whole new hobby that I really wanna share. Now today's topic is in particular is about a particular part of this hobby so i'm just gonna go ahead and say it since you see it in the background i got myself a 3d printer during the quarantine so you know the quarantine happened in march um around april while working at home i kind of got a little bit bored i'm like you know i would love to buy a 3d printer so i looked it up did some research and got myself an ender 3 pro okay um from a company called creality um, and so when I dig more, I found I'm, I'm finding this hobby more fascinating, the stuff you can create. And I've always wanted to make my figurines. Like I've always wanted to make these little figures for myself, right? Instead of buying them, you can print them, whatever color you want. And so I was like, all right, I can start my little collection that, and, and the stuff I'm into. And so with that being said, um, I've known... I've ended up buying four. <laughs> I end up owning four 3D printers instead of just one. So I'm gonna eventually do some videos on those. Um, some of the mods I've done to them. Um, I'm kind of going into more details in, in another video. Um, but this video is, is, is about specifically how to print on glass and we'll get to that. But um, before we get to that, I just wanted to say thank you for those who are still subscribed anybody new go ahead and subscribe i'm always making little interesting videos so and any questions you may ask regarding computers regarding water cooling regarding 3d printing now um i should be able to answer your question i know there's a lot of people in that space um a lot of big uh 3d printing enthusiasts but um as a humble guy here maybe I can point out a few things that they may not be able to point out, right? And I can break it down a little bit better than they could. So, um, so let me just uh, like get to the point. So, a lot of people have been trying to print on glass. And even when I started out, I was like, I'd rather print on glass. Because, the, the, again, when you print on glass, the, the, the bottom layer, the first layer, has this nice smooth texture underneath, okay? So, as an example... I'll try to show you this flash here at the bottom. So if you look at this flash, as you can see how even the bottom is and it's like glass. It's very smooth textured bottom, okay? So as you can see that, right? So the texture is like glass and the, that's the reason why I like printing on glass. It's not rough, okay? So, so to make the point, is that when you print on glass the bottom is smooth if you print on one of those magnetic sheets or like a pi sheet that is very rough your your, your first layer is going to come out a little rough that's 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 um not necessarily the top layer of the first layer but the bottom that it, that it sits on the material um on your bed is going to come out a little rough so i like the glass i just like how glass prints now the problem is with glass when i first <laughs> started printing on glass for some reason it couldn't stick it just wouldn't stink no matter what I did so I did some research find that people use air spray or glue stick try glue stick mm, it's a little messy I don't I really don't like it I don't know why people use that it's just I guess if you're desperate you would but it's just a little messy and then I tried ear spray and man, I just kind of spraying that stuff. It's sticky, yes, it's very sticky and it, and it seemed to work. But it's just, to me, you're, 
it could just be my thing, but spraying here, spraying glass, it just made it look messy. It just looked very tacky and messy and the glass looked weird. So, um, and again, some people don't mind doing that, but I wanted to print on just beer glass with nothing on it, no adhesive, nothing else. Just want to just put my print and let it stick. And so this is what happened. While I was purchasing the Creality glass for one of my 3D printers, um, I read a comment on Amazon, believe it or not. And someone said, dude, you don't need anything for the stick on glass. Just level your bed properly and it'll stick. And I'm like, really? I said, okay. So I went ahead and leveled my bed as finely as possible. That means I took the time, no more than about 20 minutes, just to make sure that each corner was like at least touching the paper. Okay, just rubbing on the paper as you go. Okay, just make sure it's nice and leveled. Once that's done, I enable a feature call in Merlin, which I which I found out called manual mesh bed leveling. I enable that feature because I didn't want to add a BL touch, like none of those kind of sensor thing. Honestly, it's cool and all, but I just feel like it's additional thing I'm adding to it that I really don't need to. Now, if you want automatic bed leveling, you can buy a BL touch and that's cool. But I feel like manually leveling your bed and enabling that, I get the best results. I've seen better results than automatic bed leveling. Just saying. So for me, just manually taking the time and doing it, the prints will come out perfect each and every time. So enable that feature, went ahead, start the first print, and to my surprise, nice and even layer. It, it came out. I can't even explain how it came out. Very, very, very good. And from that point on, I was like, now nah, I know how to do it. So, so to, instead of just rambling on, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of turn to my smaller 3D printer. This is my fourth printer, it's smaller. I have one large one and then two Ender the Pros. Again, I'll kind of go through a couple of videos. Next videos I'll post about each of them and the upgrades I've made. But no further ado, let's kind of go through the process together. So the first thing I usually do, because this is not lovely yet, this is my um, my King Groon <laughs> overly modded <laughs> uh, small printer. I, I like it, it's, it's, it's so neat, man, and this thing prints so fast. Um, it's a King, King Groon KP3, you can get this off Amazon for 170. It's a good starter printer, but of course, I never ran this printer stock. The moment I figure out how these things work, I never, you know, I mod my computer. So, of course, this was going to be modded. Um, this is completely modded. It's not stock anymore. So, for those who are familiar with 3D printing, these are some of the specs on here. I have a Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 Turbo. And in order to even get it to fit, I had to re drill the holes in order to fit that board on there. So, it fits and lined up perfectly with the connectors here. Um, the it comes with a plug um, that you plug in at the side. I decided to snip the plug and connect the power supply directly to the board. I think that's more safer than having a weird connector at the side. It's very weird. Um, and um, replace the your magnetic bed. So this is the bed it comes with. This is what I'm talking about, the magnetic bed. And if you look, you see this bed is not perfect because it has little dips in it. So this is where the manual mesh bed leveling comes in, but we'll, we'll get into that further. But this is your flexible magnetic bed that it comes with. Um, I'm not using this anymore for now, unless I'm printing like PETG, which is a more stickier material, so I can um, so I don't destroy my glass bed. Um, so I'm keeping that for now. But since I mainly print PLA and print from PLA, um, the glass bed works perfect for that. Um, so let me not distract myself here let's get into it so the first thing i usually do is i know some people heat up their hot end and they heat up their bed i don't do it that way to me if you're doing it already hot that means everything is already expanded and in, in a sense yes but um the problem is that when it's already expanded wherever you level it to it stays there so that means if you didn't level it as good you might not get the best stick because everything's already expanded and you leveled it to when it was expanded, okay? So you might not get the best leveling um, because you leveled to when it was hot, okay? I don't do it that way. I level it when it's cold, right? So everything is, is kind of 
uh, in its relaxed state, I should say. So by the time, once I level everything, and by the time everything expanded, that gap that I will create even close up just a little bit more. So that way the leveling is even better, okay? You know, you can put it scientifically that way, but I find that the result comes out better when it's cold, when you level the bed cold, than when you level the bed hot. Just my opinion there. But anyways, so right now everything is cold. First thing I usually do is um, I'm using a um, Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte with this, uh, with this printer. And so I have this application called Octopanel, which I can manage, um, manage all my printers. So what I'll go ahead and do here now is I have a G code that I customize for this bed particularly. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start leveling all four corners of the bed first. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that, hit print. And as you can see, the printer is moving. We're gonna go ahead. Um, I could have leveled it from here, from the LCD, because this is your dual screen LCD, but I just rather do it from my phone. It seems a little easier. So once it goes, it's gonna go, it's gonna go over. So I'm gonna put this paper in. Now this is a perfect thickness, okay, for me, I find. So um, you can use any regular paper, any like, you know, any type of sheet, but this is a perfect uh, paper I found to, to, to do this. So right now I have some free play. I do feel the nozzle dragging on the paper a little bit, okay, but it's not tight enough. So I'm gonna shift this a little until I feel some resist more resistance. All right, so as you can see, there's some resistance on the paper, see that? It's folding up on itself. So that's what you want. You want some resistance on that paper, okay? So now that I feel that resistance, I'm gonna go ahead and hit, press it. It's gonna go to the other end. Okay, this is free play, look at that, that's all free. It's not leveled. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the knobs until I feel some resistance. See, I got a little bit of resistance there, but for me, that's not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it up some more. And there you go. That's a good amount of resistance. So go ahead on the other side. So also make sure that the nozzle never touches the glass. You kind of always want the paper underneath there, okay? So this side already has some resistance. I, I think I can just turn it down just a little. Okay, so as you can hear it. Okay, that's what you want. So we're gonna go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna put up the resistance just a little bit more on this side. But there you go. Okay. Make sure everything is good here. All right, so right there it's tight, but that's okay. Because once we do the manual mesh bed leveling, we won't have this issue, okay? So that's fine. All right, see here, it's all loose again. So that's why it's important to, to run your, your program twice to make for any adjustments. So go ahead. All right, not enough resistance. Let me turn that up a little bit more. Okay. Right, just a little bit more in there. Okay, that's good. Okay. And like I said, I'd rather do this cold. It seems to work out a little bit better. Okay. Make sure they all feel about the same, okay? Make sure you can push the paper underneath them by itself. See, as you can see, I can push the paper underneath them, but I still feel resistance. That's what you want. Okay, there we go. All right, and to me, that's leveled manually. So that's, so all I'm doing is leveled all four corners. And there's like a 0.2 millimeter gap between the glass bed and the honey, okay? You can't see, but it's like a little gap just for, just enough for this the paper to fit in, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead, um, for those who are running Marlin firmware, we're gonna go ahead here. We're gonna go to motion. And remember, this feature won't be available unless you enable it, okay? So I'm gonna show you once I'm done here how to enable that feature. You're gonna, so let me go back to the main screen here, okay? You go to uh, motion, 
So we're gonna go to motion here. We're gonna go to all the way down where it says bed leveling. I'm gonna click on this. And then we're gonna click on level bed. As you can see, I already had the bed leveled, but I'm gonna go ahead and re-level it again since I've kind of messed with the, the knobs. So we'll go ahead and hit that. It's gonna hold all three axes. Now, this is where the magic comes in. This is where how you get it to stick to your glass bed without nothing else. So you're gonna remember what, all right, so what this is basically doing to just break it down for you before I start. <clears throat> your bed, as your bed heats up, it'll warp a little bit, okay? Even though it's not heated right now, it's still warped, okay? You just can't detect it because I'm pretty sure it's on micron level. It's nanometer level, okay? So, but you're, you're, but what, as you, as you're leveling the bed, what you're doing is basically as you make the first layer, if your bed had a little dip up and down, your Z axis is basically moving your hot end up and down to the level of your bed, okay? To keep that layer as flat as possible. That's why mesh bed leveling is important. That's why people use um, auto bed leveling because it detects the dip and pitches in your bed and it and it um, adjusts for that. The Z axis go up and down based on that adjustment you decide, um, you selected. So basically that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this paper again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit begin. So I'm gonna click here and this is a grid, um, this is a 16 point grid. So that means it's gonna probe this little bed. This is a 180 millimeter bed. It's gonna probe it 16 times. Now you can probe it 25 times, but to me, that's a little too much. Um, 16 times is perfect because you get 16 points of which you can create a 16 point grid to see how well, uh, well your bed is leveled, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and this knob here, Right now, it says the Z, as you can say, move Z, right? This knob, I'm gonna use to adjust. Right now, it's super tight. As you can see, look, I'm, I'm pulling on the paper and it's not even budging, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move it up until it's loose, okay? We're gonna move it all the way up. Right now, it's loose, okay? So we're gonna take our time and come back down. I think it does uh, uh, 10 each time, or it looks like it does 25 at a time. So. 0.25 millimeters a time. So now I'm starting to feel resistance here. See that? I'm starting to feel some resistance. It's kind of pulling a little. Now you can stop there if you wanted to. I can just do that. I think that's good enough. But sometimes I go a little further. So for me, if I come down one more, that's perfect for me. As you can hear it, that's perfect. Okay? You want it rubbing. So I click and it goes to the next point. And I do the same thing. So now this is loose right here. Okay. So we're going to keep going down until it rubs. And like I said, this is patience and time. You just take your time and do this. Be patient about it. See now feel it grab. It just grab right there. Okay. So I'm going to go one more. And that's perfect for me. Okay. So feel a little bit of resistance here already automatically. So I'm gonna go one more down and that's great. All right, see now I can hardly pull it. That means it's tight here. So we're gonna have to move up all the way up until it's loose, all the way up until it's loose. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. 0.25 each movement. I feel some resistance right here. So I'm gonna go one more and that's good. So it's loose right here again. So we're gonna keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. Still loose as you can see. Slightly feeling the resistance now. There we go. So we went one more and that's perfect. Right here. Let me see if I can go one more. I'll go back one of one. So that's perfect. Okay. Remember, you kind of want to remember how each spot feels because you want it as level as possible. You want it as evil as possible. So this is loose and you keep going down. So 
See, I keep moving it each time I move down, I kind of move it to feel it. See, now, now I feel some resistance there. It's rubbing. I'll say one more down. That's a little tight, so I'm gonna go back one up. That's perfect. So this is tight, Is you see that? That's already tight. So we're gonna move up all the way until it's loose. There we go. Then we're gonna slowly go back down. Okay, say so it, it pays off. See now, now I feel resistance right there. Hear it? So now I'm done. See now, this is tight, see? So as you realize, some spots are not as even. And so this is tight even though the last spot was loose. So you, this is why it's so important to do this manual mesh bed leveling, to get the best leveling as possible. So we're gonna move it all the way up again till it's loose. And there we go. So we're gonna move down slowly. And look, now I feel resistance right there and then. We move down one, that's too tight. So we're gonna move back up one and that's perfect. You know, this is, let me say, this is a little, it's loose, but not too tight either. So let me go up and move down one until I feel it. Just want to make sure they're all even. There we go. Now I feel the drag. That's perfect. All right, this is loose. So we're going to keep going down. Okay, so as you can see, each time I move down, I move the paper. If the paper is moving free like this, you haven't really touched anything yet, okay? So when you're moving free, you know you, you really haven't come down. So you gotta come down more. See now, now I can't move free. So now we know we're at that spot. Go up one. Okay, that's a little too tight. So, so that's perfect right there. Like I said, you want to be able to feel the nozzle touch the paper, just enough resistance, but not enough where you can't move the paper. Okay, you want to still be able to move the paper. So I'm going down here. See now? Now it just hits. So I can feel some resistance. Let me go down one. All right, that's too tight. So we go back up one, and we're good there. See now, this is too tight. So we just move all the way up till it's loose. And then we slowly come back down. So I feel some resistance here. Okay, so that's perfect. This is perfect right here. Feels the same about them, same amount. All right loose still loose now i felt the resistance there all right see this is all tight so we're gonna have to move up so now we're loose now we'll slowly move down now I feel it just grabbing right there all right so that's a good right there and this is the last point, and as you can see, it's tight. So we're gonna move it all the way up till it's loose, and slowly come back down. All right, now I feel the grab there, and that's it. So that's your mesh. So I just created a mesh, and I'm gonna show you what that mesh looked like. All right, so once it's done, you'll wanna, see it says, bed leveling on you want to go so now you can fade you can you can fade it out so that means as it lays down the line and it start laying down the first layer and second layer you can fade out the, ma the the mesh bed leveling so you so you can have it not doing that all the way through the whole print you can just turn it off you know fade it out at a certain height and then that's it it will just won't won't do it anymore but it will only do it 
when it does the first, second, or fourth layer. After that, it won't do it anymore. I usually leave it on because, you know, if you're already leveling an even bed, you might as well keep it going. Um, so what you want to do is come to um, motion again. You want to go to bed leveling. It's already on. We already did it. So what we want to do is just go here and store settings. Okay. So what that does is that each time you go to print, it will automatically turn on manual mesh bed leveling. Okay. So you don't have to always turn it on. Okay. So we're going to do a test print. So, so what I do now in preparation for this, I go ahead and I move my Z axis up a little bit. Move, move Z, 10 millimeters. So we're gonna move our Z axis up. Then we're gonna move our Y axis forward all the way. All right. And what we're gonna do next is go ahead Go to temperature, we'll go ahead and uh, preheat, preheat PLA, all right? So it's pre 200 degrees and my bed to 65 degrees. While that's happening, uh, I'm gonna wait till it gets to about 200, then I'll put my filament in, um, and then I try to kind of push the filament a little forward so that way it start coming out from the bottom, then I let it go. So I'll show you exactly the step there. Um, but this is how you get the best prints because it's so important to do that guys if you want the print to turn out really really well no blemish no issue it's this is the best way to do it um so once i set this i don't have to worry about refixing it for a long time like i can get like at least 20 prints out of this uh leveling before i have to retweak it again okay so um so, and what that does is save you from putting hairspray. It saves you from putting uh, glue sticks, painter tape, all that crazy jazz. You don't, you don't need any of that. Again, you just level your bread, use manual mesh bed leveling to help you, and boom, it'll come out perfect every single time. Your prints will stick all day long. And PLA as a whole, as a material, sticks very well anyways. So um, you won't have a difficult time having it to stick. But um, that's another thing you need to also pay attention to is um, test your PLA wheel because not all PLA run at high temperatures. Usually a baseline of 200, if it starts to string a little bit at 200, you want to turn it down maybe two degrees below that. And then that will kind of stop the stringing. So like I said, even though I started this April, I know a lot more than most people in the last five years because... Again, I'm so interested in this hobby. I've tried to study it as much as possible. So I have all the information to um, to come out with the best print. Um, so there we go. Now we have 200 degrees, 65 on the bed. So the first thing I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and pop my filament in real quick. So I'll go ahead. This is my uh, filament. Uh, sensor so if I run out of filament it will sense it and uh, pause the print Okay, so I'll try to get it in here All right Sometime I feel a little resistance there So that means it's not completely lined up. So I'm gonna have to um, Make sure this is lined up. So sometime I have to bend it Just so it behave itself and go in Okay, still having a little bit of resistance here, hold on. So in that case, when I have resistance like that, I go ahead and I snip this, because it just means that it's not even. See now it's, it's, it's pointing down, so I try to bend it up a little bit. All right, so we just push it in. See if that works. Still having some resistance there. Nope. I'm gonna go in. So in that case.
and snip a little bit more. Try to make it straight as possible. See now, sometimes you can do it at a, at, a, at, a, at a angle when you snip it, but that shouldn't really matter. See, there we go. So once I do that and push it in, just start seeing some filament. I keep pushing until some filament start coming out. So as you can see, there should be some filament. So I just go ahead and pull that off. Now, once we know there's filament in, we go ahead and this is my bottle of um, alcohol, okay? So isopropyl alcohol, um, it's the best thing to clean your bed with. You don't have to keep taking off your bed constantly. Just go ahead while it's hot, spray some. You can either spray, spray it on here or spray it on here. I just do spray it on here. You don't need a lot, just a little, right? And go ahead, take your paper towel. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on the bed, just wipe. And this help the print to stick a lot better. It cleans the surface of any oil of um, your greasy hands. If you have oily hands, it clean the surface of that or any other debris on your bed while it's hot. Okay, so if you don't like hot stuff, you can just use a glove. But I, I, honestly, once your hand is above this, you, you don't really feel the heat like that. Okay, so just rub, rub, and you can start feeling it grabbing the surface. That means it's really clean. Okay, once it's done, the bed is clean. Sometime I'll take this, wet it again, and go over it one more time. Just to make sure it's clean. See, I feel it grabbing now. And then, see that little zip right there? Sometimes I just go ahead and clean that off. All right, so, now that we are leveled, we're gonna come here. I'm gonna do a little test print to show you that it, it will stick perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead, add this little Benji that I'm gonna print. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm using Cura, of course. Um, my profile is 0.2, simple profile. Um, shell thickness, your normal shell thickness. Um, usually I do hide seam and put it in the back. Um, it's to me just that that's better. Um, 15% infill, you don't need more than that. Um, material, 200 degrees, 65 degrees bed, flow 100% on each. Speed, I usually go 60, um, I have four printers, so I don't need to go much faster than that. Um, um, and as you can see, that's my uh, retraction distance, five millimeters seem to work really perfect for me. Uh, cooling 100%, no supports. Um, skirt, I like the skirt. It's just easier because it kind of help your nozzle to prime a little bit. Um, and mesh fixes is uh, 0 0.05. That seemed to work really well for all my printers. Um, and that's about it. So let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit print with this. Um, see that my stuff is not connected. So let's go ahead and connect this real quick. All right, it's connected. So we should be able to hit print. Oh. I had it on my phone, so that's why it's saying busy. All right, so we can just hit cancel there. Okay. And um, once we hit cancel, we can go ahead Good job. All right. All right, so if we come here, I'm gonna go ahead, hit print on that Benji.
clean this up just a little bit because it's uh, spilling out. Right. Let's take this off. I don't like my nozzle messy when it prints. I usually try to clean it. Um, it's completing the, the previous G code. All right. All right, it should start printing here in a second. There we go. If you're wondering about the lights, that's my uh, my uh, NeoPixel that I installed. As you can see, look at this coming out. I want to show you how uh, even that is. You see the lines are very even. Nothing is like shrink more than one. It's coming out very evenly. So as you can see, I didn't do anything else other than using alcohol to clean the glass. And look, look what it's doing. This is at a 60 millimeter second in fill and 30 millimeters on the wall speed. So that's all you need guys. See, that's all you need to do. Make sure your bed is level properly. Um, enable manual mesh bed leveling and I will show you that feature right now in the modern surf, uh, firmware. And uh, we'll get back to see what the bed tree is doing. So as you can see, I've laid down the first um, layer and it's coming out perfectly flat. No issues whatsoever. All right, so let's look at the firmware. So, So the firm, um, I'm using the um, K3D firmware. So if you come to this website here, I'll show you where it's at. Um, for those who are new to 3D printing, um, you can come here. Cheetah 5.0. Um, they're not. They're not my sponsors. They're not paid me or anything like that. I just feel like they did a awesome job um, to include a wizard, wizard and Merlin for um, and the Marlin firmware, and it helps you to basically um, get your firmware compiled for your for your um, 3D printer. So if you come here, you can come to um, uh, firmware and you can uh, download it. So if you have a 32-bit board or 8-bit board. So I'm using 32-bit board, of course. I'm using the SKR, uh, um, Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 Turbo. If you click here, they do have pre-compiled firmware for you already. So you can download this and use this as it is. But if you want to do it yourself, you can actually just come back here, firmware, and click here. And go down to a download cheetah. And you're gonna also want to download Visual Studio um, code um, to get this going. It all, they also have a um, a guide for you as well, a 30 minute guide of how to do it for Ender 3. But it basically applies to any printer, whether it's a custom printer or not. Um, you can do it from here. So I think this is a really awesome firmware for those who are trying to get started, basically. Um, so let's show you do the in Visual Studio. So. The feature you want to enable in here is called manual mesh bed leveling. And this is right here, this feature right there, right here. So this is what's going to help you to help you level your bed. Okay. It's going to help you level your bed. So if you don't have an ABL, like a BL touch or any of these, um, fancy automatic, um, uh, bed leveling, um, sensors, you can use that and level your bed. And like, and like I said, I used it 
platform I discovered it and use it it's amazing I don't use anything else I don't need to have a automatic anything you just level your bed and it'll come out perfect now if you come here where it says grid max uh, grid max point I selected four you can do three where it probes your grid nine times, it probes your bed nine times. I did four and probed mine 16 times, as you can see that I showed you. You can even do five and it probe your bed 25 times, but that's, to me, that's a little bit too much. You have to be going through your bed 25 times. Now, it will make it even more accurate, um, but I think 16 is perfect. 16 is perfect. So, um, I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, if you want to look at the benchy again, just so you can see um, one more time. Um, going and look at that perfectly flat print so you can see look at that very even so yeah guys if you have any questions that you would like to ask just ask me guys and uh, I'm sure to answer your question when it comes to 3d printing like I said I'm uh, I have a uh, quite a bit of knowledge I'm not the smartest guy around but I have quite a bit of knowledge about this you know, of course, being quarantined for 90 days, of course, I'm going to study it all. But, uh, yeah, let me know, guys. If you have any problem with it, let me know. Um, um, I can help you out in the comments. Remember to su uh, subscribe and comment. Catch you guys. See you guys another time.